Whether it's your first apartment in the city, a trendy suburban townhouse, or that dream family home on a golf estate, there's a home for everyone on private property. Apply for your home loan with the bank awarded Best Home Loans Product in Africa. Make things happen. Nedbank. Welcome to Winner Home, the design edition. Brought to you by Private Property and Proud Association with Nedbank. This week, our contestants have been handed over full creative control as they turn their spare room into their room. Don't forget to enter our weekly SMS competition or vote for your favorite room online at winnerhome.tv to be entered into our grand prize draw for a two-bedroom apartment at Ilala Views here in Durban. Not this home, but I wonder which room I'd have. Previously on Win a Home, our contestants decorated their dining rooms and were given the individual challenge of creating a table centerpiece. On Judgment Day, the solo challenge winners were Jacqueline from Detail, Wonga from Blueprint and Zamkita from Bespoke, who all won immunity. Team Blueprint were declared the main challenge winner for their bold dining room design, while Bespoke came last, so Zamkita had to vote out a member of the team. Bye bye La Rochelle. Now the remaining contestants are Travis and Jacqueline from Detail, Wanga, Rochelle and Safiso from Blueprint and Zamkita and Renata from Bespoke. Welcome Winner Homies! There are only seven of you left and we're halfway to finding our winning designer. And you're halfway from winning a hundred thousand rand. Your next room challenge is something a little different. This week it's all about creativity and thinking outside of the box. You'll be decorating and designing the spare room. This week, you will have total freedom to create a room of your choice with only one exception. It cannot be another bedroom. Ironically enough, having the freedom to create any room adds extra pressure. When you know what room you're doing, there's already a direction and focus. And this is where the fun part comes in. This week, you will have 35,000 Rand to create a spare room that is both functional and highly creative. Always keep in mind what adds value and what the market will respond to. Open-ended dreams are the worst. It could either go and work for you, or you are just bombed, you've lost it, you did too much, and you could lose it. Team Blueprint. As last week's winners, you will have an additional 5,000 Rand for this challenge. 35 Gs, like wow, that's awesome. And with the extra five, that just make it super awesome. Contestants, with the competition heating up, we're introducing fresh perspectives to the judging of your designs. Simon Bray, your judge, is here to tell you all about it. Simon. Yeah. <laughs> Great to see you, see you man. Man. <laughs> Simon, what do you have in store for us? Well, it's an exciting couple of weeks coming up. Getting this right for the viewers at home, getting the designs to appeal to the broadest possible property market is important. You know, we're not just designing great rooms, we're designing beautiful spaces to live in. Uh, and with that in mind, we've managed to get a couple of the top real estate partners on our website to come and join us as guest judges for the next couple of weeks. So it makes sense to bring in those expert minds in the field, a couple of top real estate brand owners, to ensure that your designs are bang on what the market's looking for. Contestants, the bar has been set. Simon, I'll be seeing you soon. Excellent. Hope you guys are ready for your next challenge. Finally, I can actually show off what I've learned. Don't get too excited though, contestants. I'm also here to give you your solo challenge. This week, each contestant will have to add a touch of Durban to their rooms. You will have to communicate with your teammates and ensure that your individual additions to your room complement one another. Good luck, guys. Our contestants' newfound creative freedom could have seen them deliberate on what to do for hours. But Team Details' Travis and Jacqueline made a plan within minutes. So we're really excited. We're going to turn the downstairs into a gallery showroom. It's going to have, be a very clean space with a working table, a place to relax and just a place to express. So our concept is a work from home design studio. And as you walk in, it will be very, not office-like, but it's still a studio. A whole range of this person's, our client's products will be shown off as well. So that's really exciting to see. 
It can be a place where we get inspiration and give inspiration. That would be amazing. I, I love we've it. We've got it, girl. The whole room's gonna be painted blue, except for a show wall where we're gonna have different colored fabrics draped draped down that wall. Uh, it's gonna give a lot of texture to the room and a lot of warmth. As for Team Blueprint, the boys also only needed to spend a matter of seconds in their spare room for them to know exactly what they'd like to turn it into. Man cave. Man cave. The concept of our room is a man cave, but not a man cave. It's like a metrosexual man cave. I would really love something that comes up to you with the, the lights. Dropping lights. Mm. Mm. That would be awesome. For the modern day man who is very fresh, who is youthful, and who's very smart and who likes his stuff slick and new. And that's the concept, the man cave, the new man cave. I came up with that because I'm with the two boys, so I thought it's quite cool to do a man cave as I can give them the opportunity to have a lot of input. Soft finishing is here, Rochelle. Yes. We're going to drop in some seats there, so when you're chilling with the bras, you've got the view, you've got your bar. Yeah. And then we thought about putting a study because in the brief they said it must be a multifunctional room. It's going to be amazing, guys. Okay, I think. We'll see. A man cave sounds like a great idea, provided Blueprint can pull it off. As for Team Bespoke, they've got a very different idea. Our room is a family room, so we're going for a more relaxed, kid-friendly room. And we're doing a library situation as well, so you can come down, have a read, have a nap, just have a nice time with your family. Designing for children, we're trying to not make it a nursery, school, playroom. We're just giving them an area in the room. It's an yeah. integrated space. It's for the whole family. So it's not specifically um, focused on the children. It's just a comfortable space for the entire family. The private property website celebrates the neighborhoods of South Africa. And Durban Central is one that Surf Crazy CEO Simon Bray is very passionate about, especially the developments underway for inner city renewal. This year's Winner Home Grand Prize winner could be calling Durban home. Simon is here to tell us why Durban is the place where you want to live. Simon, we're at the heart of the city at Dr. Pixley House. What role is this building playing in regeneration and development of the area? Well, I think what's, what's great about this is we're right in the middle of the inner city. Uh, it's an area that hasn't been occupied for the last six years, and yet we're seeing this rejuvenation of an old building. Uh, one of the best examples of Art Deco architecture anywhere in the city uh, and it's really great to see this being converted into a livable space again. And this is going to be a fantastic building, you know, you're talking about 115 residential apartments, people living and working nearby, it's going to be a great development. While there might be a few months to go before it's tenant ready, this is a block that's going to sell out fast. This building is in the city centre. Everything's at your fingertips. Yeah, I think that's what makes it such a great destination for investors in particular. You're talking about a captive market. You're talking about people that live and work in the city. Uh, and those are going to be the tenants and residents here in the building. So a great investment opportunity. Uh, values between 400 and 700,000 Rand for an apartment. Uh, but investment yields significantly above that. You know, easily pick up rentals of around 8,000 Rand a month. So I think that's, that's what's nice to see is Durban property is not just one dimensional. It's not just about fancy estates further north, but it's about projects like this that are really changing the cityscape and offering great affordable options to the market. Convenience and the beach is just down the road. So go check it out. Durban's Golden Mile is a paved walkway linking Blue Lagoon in the north and Addington in the south, a hotspot for tourists and locals alike wanting to enjoy a little sea breeze in the seemingly endless sunshine. Durban Promenade is so beautiful. I feel like I'm in a constant holiday. I mean, Durban's always been South Africa's favorite holiday destination. You know, you've got the fun and the sea and the sand. But one of the reasons we set out at Private Property to showcase South Africa's neighborhoods, its, its unique property markets uh, in our neighborhoods project was to dispel some of the myths about areas like Durban. It's not just about holidays. It's about uh, commerce. It's about retail. It's about uh, property development. And it's a very exciting development, this promenade development because it's re-energized the city completely and I think that's what's exciting. Uh, it's also driving the property market forward. Uh, we've got lots of new developments coming on behind the scenes and I think all of that happening because of this great strip that we've now got. 
It's great to see Durban so re-energized all the way to being the official host city for the 2022 Commonwealth Games. What impact will this have on the city? We've got a world-class sporting event coming to uh, Durban in 2022 that's going to drive property development in the run-up to the Games. Uh, and I think it's a great opportunity that Durban's got uh, to showcase not only the city, but the country. <laughs> Thanks, son. What's up, man? You might have taught me a lot about property in Durban. Yeah? But I'm going to teach you something on the court. <laughs> we'll see, man. Okay! Did you see? One up. <laughs> If you watched Presenter Search on 3, you'll know that Kanya used to be a high school basketball coach. But does he realize that he's up against a man who's been taking jump shots for years? Oh, Simon, not bad. Not bad at all. He's actually quite good. Home ground advantage, what can I say? And you could have the home ground advantage. Just enter every single week into one of our weekly SMS competitions to win 50,000 Rand in LG products or a luxury Mercedes-Benz GLC or our two-bedroom apartment at a lot of views here in beautiful Durban. You could be a winner. Last point wins, come on. So how exactly are you going to stand in line to win? There are two different ways to enter. The first is to simply vote online for your favorite team at winnerhome.tv and you'll be entered into our grand prize draw where you could win one of three amazing prizes. The third prize is 50,000 rands worth of LG products so you can furnish your home with cutting edge appliances. The second prize is the all-new Mercedes-Benz GLC 300, the latest addition to their luxurious German-engineered lineup. As for the first prize, it's a two-bedroom home at Ilala Views in Durban, set within the prestigious Ilala Ridge Estate with magnificent views. The second way to enter into the grand prize draw is to enter our weekly bonus competitions via SMS. Our bonus prize this week is a gas prize to the retail value of 5,000 Rand. To enter, SMS the keyword HOME to 33728. SMSs cost 1 Rand 50. Entries close at midnight on Monday the 5th of October and T's and C's can be found on winnerhome.tv. Remember, voting online as well as each SMS to enter our bonus competitions puts you in line to be one of three winners for our three grand prizes. Plascon, the paint with up to 15 years quality guarantee. Welcome back to Winner Home the Design Edition, brought to you by Private Property in proud association with Nedbank. <laughs> the mastery of colour is essential to great design. Colour can give a room more personality, it can create the illusion of space, it can even affect your mood and appetite. And from Plascon gives our contestants an insightful and colourful masterclass on colour. I'm off to skate quickly. Ah. So you know how colour can totally transform the look of a room, but what colour can also do is it can affect us physically, mentally and emotionally. And that's because colours have energy that affects us whether we like that colour or not. For the first time I actually was able to get into Anne's headspace and understand what she thinks about when she walks into a room and sees a paint colour. It's completely different from what our point of view. I'm thinking, oh, it looks great in the room. She's thinking, oh, how does it make me feel? Okay, so the first colour I'm going to start with is red. So red is a powerful energizer and stimulant. So you want to use it in spaces where activity is going to take place. Orange and its shades like terracotta and also its tints like peach are very warm, welcoming and friendly colours. Orange is also a very creative colour and a very sociable colour and it also boosts confidence. What I learned from the Colour Masterclass is that colours really evoke uh, feelings and emotions out of people and that's why you're drawn to certain colours and repel others. Yellow is one of the most uplifting colours in the spectrum. Another thing yellow does is it stimulates your brain and so it's a great colour to have around where you need to study or plan. Blue is probably self-explanatory, it's the world's favourite colour. It symbolises peace, tranquility, it's a very relaxing and calming colour. It's a very loyal, trustworthy colour. So green has a balancing effect, 
It is naturally healing and nurturing, and because of its balancing vibrations, it's a great stress reliever. The thing with too much green, though, you can get a little bit lazy. If you're finding that, to create some balance, bring in the opposite color. The opposite color to green is red, which you've done very successfully bespoke. I see you using complementary colors a lot. So that brings us to our last color in the spectrum, and that's purple. Okay, purple has also been linked to royalty, to luxury. It's also linked to spirituality. It's a great color to help people uh, with self-respect to feel good about yourself. So I've seen this color coming through quite a lot, so it's one to look out for. We want to know all about color. We want to know if we're going in the right direction with color. And Anne has given us some great advice and tips on how to use color in a room and how to complement it to everything else that you're doing. And do you mind explaining this rule of 60, 30, 10 when you're designing a color scheme for a room, please? Plan on 60% of the room being your main color. So one color, that's, it's usually your wall color. Then 30% of the color should be in a shade that's close to that or goes with that. And 10% should be an accent color. So it's totally different. It really grabs your attention. So if you did a room in all green, for instance, your 10% could be 10% red. Guys, good luck. And I'm looking forward to seeing your lovely spaces. Our contestants have been let loose on the Durban design scene. And with 35,000 Rand to spend on their spare room, our contestants and their imagination have run wild. Team Detail have a date with their iron monger to come up with something cutting edge. So the idea is to use this bird's nest um, idea okay. on this whole wall. So from this point all the way there. Today. So That's... when they bring their clients through, the first thing they would see is this bird nest um, okay. concept. Also I want to show you this, um, so this metal effect we want to also try and bring in throughout the studio to make it almost of a, of a library or a book storage, mm -hmm. as well as a bar over there where we can hang fabrics. Okay. So Gabriel, uh, what kind of price are we looking at to get this all done? Uh, I would think that we should come in, I would imagine, under 5,000 Rand. Yes! Mm. Let's make this happen. Yeah, okay, yeah, make this happen. Anymore, it wouldn't happen. <laughs> Great. Paris is all about the money. Meanwhile, Bespoke is meeting with Fabric Fundi, Henny Dreyer. We're in the fabric store. Um, we're with our mentor, Dokozo and Henny. Okay. okay. So this is what I had in mind. Mm. Mm. Well, small like sort of motif yes. sort of patterns. Yeah. We like the pattern, maybe a different colour. Mm. What about the blues? Yes, because that would go nicely. That's very nice. And he's teaching us about the kind of fabrics that are suitable for upholstery. I picked out a fabric, I thought it was great, but it wasn't functional. So we want it yeah. on, um, an, like on two occasional chairs. Yes. This yeah. pattern. Is the occasional chair going to take a lot of traffic? Yes. Yes. Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. This is good for sort of domestic application, right. lampshades, stuff like that. I wouldn't stick it on a couch or okay. an occasional chair. I'd rather use something with a higher rub rate. Okay. I'd rather do something in excess of 25,000 Martindale abrasions. What's the last thing you want? Martindale rub rate? There's an abrasion test that we do to see how durable the fabric is. I mean, some curtaining fabrics have oh, 18 to 20, wow, okay. so. We were thinking in terms of doing piping as well to just bring it a little bit of more punch. Yeah. So, if you put it like that. But uh, that looks a bit formal though. It does look a bit formal. It's pretty, but. What about an amazing. orange? Okay. Uh -huh. Vibrant, Vibrant orange. Look. I like the vibe. Oh, nice. oh, oh I, I like, like that. that. As for Team Detail, they're also fabric shopping, and Travis couldn't be more excited. I want to be able to take my hands and my face and just oh, lash against these cloudy, velvety textures. It's going to be purples, greens, everywhere. I'm so excited for this. <laughs> Our Team Blueprint just as passionate about the creation of their bar. Richard, our carpenter, we met at the DIY store and he decided to go for super wood. That was all that our budget could allow. Yeah, I'm ah! over. Mine's the yellow thing. Yes, wait, wait! Man, so me and Wango want to play all macho and we're like, we're going to load the MDF. Yeah. Dude, it was hard to carry that thing. It was heavy. I was sweating and I don't like sweating. Wait, wait. But it's on his foot. Come it's on, on man. Foot. I can't pick it up. Wango's foot. I can't. <laughs> we need help. Hey, speed so grow a muscle, bro. Whatever muscles you must grow, grow a muscle. We can actually. Let's Why go. don't you get somebody with a trolley? Oh, oh there's a trolley. The guy has tried loading it, and Zafiso almost broke his back. 
It was so yeah, funny. Oh, yes, I went, I went, I went, I went, my bro. Thank you so much. Push! Push! Guys, which way are we going? Two boards. Not one. Two. Two. <laughs> oh, I get <laughs> <laughs> The stage is getting even more worse. And with that, day one draws to a close. So far, so good. Remember, you have less than a month left before we close our competition to win a two-bedroom apartment in Durban or a luxury car or 50,000 rands worth of appliances by either entering online at winnerhome.tv or by entering our weekly SMS competitions where you can win bonus prizes too. Welcome back to Winner Home, the design edition, brought to you by Private Property in proud association with Nedbank. Winner Home is a game of numbers. This week, three teams have three days to decorate three different rooms with 35,000 Rand. After all of this, one contestant is going home. Team Blueprint have a wild concept that needs explaining. We've got this crazy pendant lamp thing that we're doing with wires wrapped around it and the up and down. It's going to look proper for a man cave. The concept is this has got this log. It's, it's like a log and it's got like these wires, the wires down. around it. But they, <laughs> shouldn't, they shouldn't be on the level. level. So they're like it's suspended. suspended. It's got these yeah, logs yeah, okay, that hold hang. Hold on, hold on. Are you guys confused? Wait, wait. It's got this plank on it. I don't think this lighting guy gets us. He's, he's lost. So what is this? What is what is wrapped around like this? Is it a plank or is it a cord? What's going wrong? We're trying to tell him, okay, we're trying to do this concept. This is what it's going to do. He's like, ah, he doesn't understand. Yeah, I think the boys, they're very animated. So I think he was a bit thrown off. Let's, it's best. Let me show you. Let me show you, bro. Look at this And then when we showed him a picture, he knew what we were talking about. And he's like, ah, oh, OK. Wooden plank, and then it's got the cord swept around, 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 around. around, around. Get it. And then everything was just expensive. So you want to go for the cheapest? Please. Yeah, yeah. But it's also got to look presentable. Yes. It's not what we wanted to do. But yeah, he gave us options of what we can use for that, basically. You're probably looking at about 69 Rand a globe. What? Yeah. 69 Rand a globe. And, and the fitting? The fitting itself, you're looking at about 12 Rand for one of these. What? We are saving, Rochelle. We are saving. Nice, one. nice one. Then, one. Stop. Nice. Journey, journey, journey. The, the light, I think, will be very manly. It will go a little bit away from the metrosexual look. It will just be more rustic and bring the more manly element to the room. Ooh. That's awesome. That's nice, dude. This is awesome. It's a 64. Mm. What? What? It's a 64. Oh, my God. It's a 64. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh. Looking nice, dude. Meanwhile, Team Bespoke are visiting a second-hand store. But instead of spotting the odd antique, the ambiance makes Renata freak. What is this place? This is where furniture comes to die. <laughs> Funny, can we go, please? Why? Are you scared? No, I'm not scared. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Let's go. You're so scared. We're not going to find anything here, man. Let's go. We chose to go to a second-hand store because our budget's quite tight and we had a lot of space to fill. So we figured, let's buy something cheap and then zhuzh it up with some fabric. So the, the furniture shop is a little eerie. Um, all the furniture is mismatched and a little damaged. And you don't really know, like, what is the story behind that sofa? What happened there? You know, he sat on that. It's a little scary. Oh, look, the corpse of an old armchair. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, I'm gonna go because I don't think we're gonna find anything. In okay, bye. What Where was that? did that come uh -uh. from? What was that? This is Ooh, very awesome. nice. Yeah, yeah high five. Five. Great price. Yeah, that's nice right. So we've just found these in the furniture graveyard. Oh, very nice. Uh, good bones. We're gonna. Bring them back to life with some great fabric. We exhume them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's pay. Wow. Okay, great. Okay. Wow. Mm. While scaredy cats bespoke are glad to have left the second-hand store with their lives, Team Blueprints Wanga is on site preparing to paint the wall that's going to act as a multicolored feature behind their custom-made bar. So I'll be using the two colors here, Pepper Path and the big blue star, basically. Those are the two choices of colors that I have to use. They say they trusted me with that, so I'm so happy they trusted me with that too. 
Well, to me, the crisscross on the wall speaks of Durban, diversity, different people, different colors, and we're putting it together in one bar. So it's like this connection space of just crisscrossing ideas. Unfortunately, Wanga's painting has not delivered the desired effect. The lines are not perfect. They're a little bit blurry and there's like paint everywhere, like always. As for Team Detail, they're working on their feature wall too. Our wow factor is definitely the feature wall as you come down the stairs. So I'm really excited to actually see this come to life. Eventually our feature wall arrives, it took longer than expected and now it doesn't line up with the building. So this feature wall's been laser cut and it's perfect. The only problem is the wall isn't straight. Fingers crossed. Let's see. So the rooms are all works in progress, but how are the contestants coming along with their individual challenges to create a decor item that adds a little Durban flavor? It's a rod with strings that hold the frames randomly. And each end of the rod itself, I have these hanging globes, basically. So now what you get now, you get a picture frame that becomes a, a lamp as well, somehow. I found a surfboard on the internet and I'm meeting the guy and seeing if it's legit. Hi, are you Cullen? Yeah. <laughs> wow, cool. It's perfect. So you're an enthusiastic surfer. How do you feel about me turning this into a wine rack? Well, I don't mind. Uh, at, least it's, at least I'm selling it. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I chose a surfboard because it's Durban and Simon likes surfing. Wink, wink. Devastation. I'm looking for Utanti, the Zulu mat. I want to use that because, like, KwaZulu Natal is the Zulu kingdom. So I want to use the guy, frame him down the stairs, and I've got like a yellow frame around him. So it's that get elements of Zululand and elements of diversity, unity sitting together in one space. So I'm trying to do something very traditional but modern in the same way and very sleek and contemporary. I finally found time for my individual challenge in the car parking lot of our hotel where we're staying. I was going to use these stencils, but it turns out that they're actually Vendor. Vendor and Durban are not really one and the same. So now I'm just going to do an abstract version of A Taste of Durban. These custom Zimkita pieces will probably retail for about 55,000 Rand a pop after the show. <laughs> hmm, right now, Team Bespoke is really living up to its name, creating custom furniture too. This week we're focusing more on design and we're hoping to wow the judges with our custom-made wall units and our custom-made day bed. So we wanted a modern day library and that's why we decided to build custom shelves for this wall. Yeah, we wanted something that was... Yes, that, that and custom made and durable. As you can see, everything's fine. You know, that's when you go with quality. The shelves, I was a bit nervous about because you know when you see something and it's in your head in a certain way and you're not sure if it's going to translate the same way into reality? That's how I felt about the shelves. But in the end, it looked even better. As for Team Detail, their custom-made shelves are just a source of drama and they're still really struggling to get their room together. We've picked up the shelves from uh, the carpenter, but there's no frames to hang them on yet. For some reason, there's, they're not getting grip on the concrete and the, and the walls. Uh, it's falling apart just like our room. I'm asking myself, was it really worth it at this point? Could, couldn't we have just bought shelving? And, and just put it into our space and just be like everyone else. At least Team Blueprint is coming along nicely. Our wow factor would definitely be the wallpaper behind our bookshelf. We drop it in there and it just looks like this wallpaper with the bookshelf and it's like this bookshelf is, some, is in front of this, you know, this, um, this tropical thing going on. It just looks amazing, amazing. Nice work, but what about their light? We're in the room, planks there, We've got wires wrapped around it. We finish it up and, oh my gosh, it looks hot. The team dynamic this week, I really love working with the boys. 
We remember to have fun, I think that's important, and we feed from each other's energy. Something Team Detail could use. All right, it's the end of the day. Jackie, what is going on with your spare room? Everything is falling apart, Kenya. Our fabrics haven't arrived from Johannesburg. The installation is taking too long. Well, essentially, you have one hour tomorrow to put in your final touches. Hopefully, you can get something here because there's nothing going on here now. Yeah, we need a miracle. <laughs> there's nothing happening in our room. That's the biggest problem. This day is falling apart. Our room is empty. We have no furniture. Life is not as happy as it was a week ago. Will the space come together? At this moment, we have no idea what the space looks like together. And that is really scary because handover is tomorrow. The sun is set on the final day and our contestants will have an hour tomorrow to put in their final touches. Let's see who will survive the spare room challenge. When we return, we get to meet our guest judges for the week and two of our teams frantically race towards the finish line while one barely breaks a sweat. Any guesses as to which? Whether it's your first apartment in the city, a trendy suburban townhouse, or that dream family home on a golf estate, there's a home for everyone on private property. Welcome back to Winner Home The Design Edition, brought to you by Private Property in proud association with Nedbank. Our guest judge this week is Durbanite Clifton Smithers. He's had a successful career in interior design and architecture, and he believes that good people and good design leads to good business. Clifton is a founder and director of Union 3, a full-service design solution company that's been going strong for over a decade. We just jumped in. We started the business. We saw a need and a gap in the market where people needed uh, good designers to help um, make good decisions about their property. I, I would say that our style leans very much on an easy living contemporary style. A lot of the homes we work on and the projects we work on are actually in Durban. Um, the climate is really good here all year round so you know we get a good understanding of how people want to live. We use a lot of uh, fresh colours more natural textures, timbers, clean-cut contemporary designing is what we're after. Clifton hopes this show will encourage more people to take design as seriously as he does. I think Durban in particular and South Africa in particular, there hasn't really been an appreciation for design. People try and cut corners, do things on the cheap. So a show like this is really important, I think, to kind of entrench the importance of good designers. I mean, how can you build a, a beautiful home and not have a good core design team around you making key decisions? I would hope that the contestants actually risk. They've really got nothing to lose. They're full of passion, they've got the world at their feet. We're not looking for cookie cutters, we're looking for people that are actually confident in their ability and want to grow, want to learn and want to try things, want to try new stuff. It's the final day in the spare room challenge and time is running out. Our contestants' individual challenge is to put a touch of Durban into their spare room. They have no extra budget and their contributions have to be unique and they have to complement one another. They're working together against one another. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not doing this. It's the final day of the spare room challenge and our contestants are busy fiddling with the finer details to ensure their rooms are ready for the big critique. We have an hour left and we need to tidy up, sweep up, put our final touches on and we'll be ready for the judges. I hope they'll notice the different way we've tried to use all the space in the room and the little details, having games out, the kiddies corner, even though it was not the most polished of rooms. The killer of our room is our bar. Custom-made bar, crazy wall, everything is just bespoke. It's really done to detail. <laughs> and I think we've got the winning plan here. This is the winning team. My individual challenge is kind of 50-50 at the moment. The electrician has installed the cables for my light, um, but I need to put the baskets up. Yeah, so I've got three lights hanging from the ceiling and it's meant to be sort of a centerpiece in our, in our living space. I've got three baskets, Zulu baskets, and that's, that's my touch of Durban, really. I think the color that we've used, the different components in our room as well, I think are very different, and aesthetically, I think it will look beautiful. 
While they feel the room is almost ready, Jacqueline still has to install her touch of Durban. This is my individual challenge. So these are baskets. Um, I've turned them into pendants. So the concept is, this was drawn from the waves in Durban. So we've got the traditional colors as well going on there. The challenge is now hanging these up. I don't want them to be at the same height. So we're trying to figure out what height works best. As for Travis, his item is good to go. Jack and I bounced a few ideas. Eventually, I found these beautiful tin cups with beadwork wrapped around them. It's exactly what I'm looking for. This is the part where things get stressful for our contestants. It's the last five minutes. Five minutes, guys! Oh, ooh, we're gonna sweep this up now. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, something. I've got five minutes left, and I have to try and figure all this out. Oh, we're done. Should I push anyone? It's too easy! <laughs> While Team Blueprint chill out at their bar, bespoke and detail need every extra second they can get. Okay, I think it's okay. It's just, it just has to do. For fresh perspectives on the judging of our contestants' work, we have a new panel of judges, the three C's, Chris, Charles and Cliff. Chris Tyson, the CEO of Tyson Properties, is a top real estate expert. Charles Thompson is the director of Construction ID, the company building Ilala Views. And Clifton Smithers is from Durban-based architectural and design service company, Union 3. All right, judges, this is Bespoke's family room. Their feature wall really pops and their refurbished furniture looks as good as new. But is it enough to get the judges' vote? So Charles, what are your immediate thoughts on the room? It's quite a nice space. It feels quite cool and relaxed in here. I really like this back feature wall. It sort of brings the house out quite a bit and it's actually a very nice feature wall. My first impression was that the room was quite spacious and it was very light and that the blue wall with the bookshelf feature actually drew you immediately into the room. Also nice that there's a lot of natural light and a breeze. Absolutely. It's a north-facing patio, so as a family room, you know, you can have sundowners here or coffee with friends, kids can play. I also like the fact that it's the only room that spills out into the, the gardens. Mm. So your kids can run around the gardens and they're going to be in and out of here. I also love the curtaining. I think they did a great job of the curtaining and you know, also from a resale point of view, I think it really adds value that they've spent money on the curtaining and you can see they've spent money on the curtaining. Oh, Chris, I quite like the space under the stairs here. It's, yeah, uh, they've added a lot of value because they've actually made two different spaces and if you've got kids yourself, you'll, you'll know that it's nice to be able to keep them a little bit separate as well. Yeah. Mm. No, they also like that restricted height. They're quite, 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 yeah. quite fun. So yeah, it'll give them, a, give them a little cave type feel for them. Least favourite was probably the sparse sort of furniture. A TV or something on that family wall would have, been, would have made it. I think there was no real feature point in the room. Yeah, I think one of the things I need to do is um, just to soften the environment. Just introduce a rug and mm. takes away the echo. Right now the place is a little bit echoey. Also notice that the globes that they've used in the chandeliers, they've used an energy saving globe which is not the most decorative feature. Now to judging Bespoke's individual challenge items. I don't think the painting fulfilled the brief. It reminded me something of a European or a Brazilian kind of market. I don't think that's really an aspect of Durban, that painting. The lights were a very good touch, very Durban cultural in terms of the Zulu beads and that, and I, th I think it was a very well implemented product. I just don't think that they executed it in the right way. I think the light fittings that they chose from across is very cheap, and I think they've clumped together as opposed to spreading them out a little bit. Last up is Blueprint's Man Cave. Will the bar and the show-stopping feature light impress the judges? I think this is an outstanding room. I think. The guys have pushed the boundaries a little bit. They've got a combination of some vintage, some contemporary. Um, it's very much more of a masculine look. So it might not be everyone's uh, cup of tea, but I, I think they've, they've creatively used the space very, very well. And you can have a drink, you can chill. There's a bit of a reading lounge over there. I, I, I'm impressed with this room. I agree with you completely on the fact that it presents very, very well. The couch looks fantastic, the light fitting looks fantastic. I just don't feel that they've used the space um, to their maximum. It's very individual and I think when you invest into a property, I think you should try and capitalise on your, the value of your property as well. Yeah, I'm, sort of, I'm sort of in between the two of you, I'm a bit torn. 
I like the quality of the finishings and I like the quality of what they've done, but I just don't know if it's that functional space. It's, the room feels a bit smaller to me. I also think the other room, you know, they use curtains where they've used blinds here. I, I kind of feel like I'm sitting in my office with, with blinds as opposed to something soft on the windows. Yeah. The one thing I don't, I'm not too impressed with is that dead space under the staircase. I agree, yeah. Utilised a lot better. One thing I'm impressed with is uh, the effort that's gone into this chandelier. Nice choice of uh, globe as well. These globes are very on trend at the moment. A lot of people are using them in funky bars and coffee shops all around the world. So they're definitely trying to make a statement, which is a little bit more edgy, a little bit more risky on the design front. So it would seem the man cave has made a mostly good impression. But will the team's individual challenge items get the thumbs up too? The surfboard, very clever usage of, of, um, of the surfboard. Very typical Durban, and um, as a surfer, I liked it. The mat I thought was just a bit too plain. Um, yes, I understand that the mat is very Durban, but I don't think um, enough creativity went into it to um, make it stand out in my mind. Fishing was a very novel idea. I've never seen that before. Whether I would actually buy that and use it in my house, I'm not sure, but uh, 10 out of 10 for the idea. All right, judges, this is Detail's home design studio. Have a look. At one point, it looked like Detail wouldn't have anything to show for their efforts, but it seems it all came together in the end. Judges, have you been inspired by the room to design it all? Interesting room. With such a small space, the guys have really kind of kept it quite sparse. Completely different room, very blue, um, but a fresh space and, yeah, quite creative. This is an interesting feature, the fact that you've got a multi-purpose table for any young professional, whether they're a fabric designer or an interior designer, they can work from here quite comfortably. So I think it's, it's different. I think also what you're doing with the space is that you're cutting off the only area of garden. Mm. So if there's clouds in here, you're actually cutting off that space. I also don't like the fact that they've painted the whole staircase blue because it, it makes it stand out. If they painted it white, the staircase would have disappeared and made the room look a lot bigger. But I do like the area with the two chairs. Um, I think they've used that space very well. Mm. I mean, other than sitting over there or actually having a business meeting or creative workshop here, you don't really have other uses for the room. It doesn't from a real estate perspective. I think that because it looks so open, and I think people can see it as a blank canvas. Um, so I don't think it would detract from a sale point of view. Yeah, you can kind of get a feel that a little bit of the finishing has been rushed here. There's a few snags, this table edge is very sharp and hasn't been finished very well. There's still a price tag on the edge of the aluminium. You can see the window dressing has been left off, kind of half finished. So that obviously is not ideal. They picked up that things were rushed. Will the individual challenge items fare better? Light feature was okay. I think they could have done more. With uh, the trend in lighting today, so I think it was, a, it was okay. I was disappointed with the mugs, um, that they'd used mugs in, um, as part of their challenge and um, when everybody else had put in so much more effort. With the price tags still on. <laughs> That's the detail. It was literally something bought from a shop and stuck on a table. So I wasn't impressed at all with that. Well, judges, I hope the room doesn't have you feeling blue, because now you have to pick a winner. Not an easy one, eh? No, not easy. Totally different spaces, though. Yeah. Totally different. I'm amazed, actually, how different they are. Now let's look at those rooms again from a budget perspective. As last week's winners, Team Blueprint had an extra 5,000 Rand to add to their 35,000 Rand budget. They made their own bar and feature light, which cost 4,600 Rand for the carpenter and 3,317 Rand for the light bulbs. But they also spent 4,352 Rand on wood, paint and labour. As for Bespoke, they managed to come in under budget by just 11 Rand. They bought second-hand furniture for just 3,800 Rand in a bid to save money, but the fabric to cover it was 6,601 Rand so it wasn't all that wallet-friendly after all. The real penny-pincher this week was Team Detail. Their home office came in under budget by a whopping 4,969 Rand. Their installation was just 5,035 Rand as they created it themselves, and the fabric for their feature wall cost a mere 1,579 Rand. Will their savings end up paying off? When we return, the judge's decision is revealed and someone's design journey comes to an end.
Make the things that really matter happen for you. Use the Nedbank Instant Bond Indicator to find out the home loan amount you could qualify for in three minutes flat. Go to nedbank.co.za forward slash home loans. Make things happen. Nedbank. Welcome back to Winner Home, the design edition. It seems everyone on Winner Home was bit by the interior design bug. With awesome designs every week by our contestants, we were inspired to do a little interior designing of our own. Welcome to the brand new Winner Home studio. Contestants, come in. The studio is awesome, I loved it. I was like, wow. Well done on your spare rooms. Each spare room was spectacular this week, but one of you is going home today. To those of you who win the individual challenge, you are safe from elimination. Should you be in the worst performing team, teams of two, there will be no vote. The loser of the individual challenge will be going home. I'm freaking out a little on the inside. Team Blueprint, should you be the worst performing team this week, the winner of the individual challenge will have the power of elimination. Good luck to each of you. The winners of the individual challenges this week are from Bespoke. For your woven, repurposed baskets, congratulations, Renata. I'm stoked for her, but then I'm also like, dong, dong, dong. Yay, I'm, it's uh, bittersweet. If we are in the bottom, then some keto's definitely going home, so. From Team Blueprint, for your surfboard wine rack, congratulations, Rochelle. I didn't even hear them saying it. And then when they said wide surfboard, I'm like, that sounds familiar. <laughs> and someone bumped me and I'm like, oh, that's me. She deserves it. No, no, she does. That, that surfboard was awesome. I was a bit jealous, but yeah, awesome. <laughs> and lastly, from Detail, for your traditional light covers. Congratulations, Jacqueline. Winning the solo challenge, I'm really excited. Losing this individual challenge was obviously important. Uh, it puts me in a very, very high risk space. The three of you are safe from elimination. The spare room is not an easy space to work with. The freedom to pick anything can be overwhelming. Team Bespoke, you had a family room. The judges were blown away by your feature wall and were quite impressed with your clever use of space. However, you didn't have a rug which left the space feeling quite empty. Blueprint. The judges were impressed with your high design element and felt that you stuck to your hashtag bold design theme. However, having a man cave only speaks to a specific audience and we're looking for a wider reach. Detail, you had a home design studio. The judges were really impressed with your multifunctional table and the use of space in your back wall. However, your poor application of color let you down and you guys simply did not finish the challenge. The winner this week is Congratulations, Blueprint. Two weeks in a row, you're the winner of this week's challenge. I'm thanking the design guards. I'm thanking the whole team. I am beyond happy. I'm so grateful because I think we put in a lot of work in that room. I was uh, hoping it was going to be us. It wasn't unexpected. I had Wanga chirping in my ear since two weeks ago that they were going to win this challenge. So it would be nice to shove it back in his face, but um, not today. This part is always tough. The worst performing team this week is. Team detail. Travis, that means you're going home. You've been eliminated. Shocker. I uh, wish my best to, to Jackie. I really think she has what it takes. It's been fantastic working with her. Uh, there's some strong contenders there. 
and it's, I think it's literally a 24-7 game here. Uh, sure, so disappointed. Um, I've, I think I've achieved what I wanted to achieve. Um, yeah, so it's been a good ride. Jacqueline, that makes you Winner Home's first team champion. The team champion has put a lot of pressure on us. She's got her work cut out real big for her. You are guaranteed a spot in the top three, but you're also the sole designer for the remaining rooms in your unit. Your room lost this week, and you need to up your game. I am so excited, because I'm finally going to get a chance to show South Africa what I'm all about. And I'm really nervous because it's, it's a lot of pressure. Simply vote online for your favourite team at winnerhome.tv and you'll be entered into our grand prize draw where you could win one of three amazing prizes. The other way to enter into the grand prize draw is with our weekly bonus SMS competitions. Our prize this week is a gas bry to the retail value of 5,000 Rand. To enter, SMS the keyword HOME to 33728. SMSs cost 1 Rand 50. Entries close at midnight on Monday the 5th of October and T's and C's can be found on winnerhome.tv. Last week's winner of our SMS prize is Nirvana Kassishand from Durban, who wins Plascon paint to transform her home. Finding the right place to call home takes time, but getting your home loan shouldn't. Apply for a Nedbank home loan today and stand a chance to win 100,000 rands worth of home decor to help you turn your new house into a dream home. Visit nedbank.coza slash home loans, go to your nearest branch, or call 0860 911 007 and let us help you make the things that really matter happen. T's and C's apply. When a home has its first team champion and things are about to change dramatically on the show, we're left with six contestants and only one can be a winner. Don't forget to enter our weekly SMS competition or vote for your favorite room online at winnerhome.tv to be entered into the grand prize draw for a two-bedroom apartment here in Durban. Catch Winner Home on Friday at 7.30 or the repeat on Saturday at 4.30. Until then, good night. Another feel good production. Whether it's your first apartment in the city, a trendy suburban townhouse, or that dream family home on a golf estate, there's a home for everyone on private property.